Hello, Internet. Um, I am getting over a flu today, so I'm not going to be nosing and tasting things as usual, but this gives me a chance to talk about something um, that I've been puzzling over quite a little bit, actually, and, and also debating with my coworkers, which is kosher spirits. Kosher spirits. There's quite a number of videos on YouTube right now which will tell you individual examples of kosher spirits, but... Uh, I wanted to make a short video just kind of outlining kind of what the rules are for um, particularly for like, you know, folks like me who like uh, I'm, you know, say I'm a, a well-meaning idol worshiping goyim, but I've been invited to a nice kosher dinner and I'm I've been told to bring a spirit. What do I bring? Um, what do I bring? So you might think this is actually going to be pretty hard, right? Um, you might have some image in your mind of everything having to go through, you know, rabbinical supervision or something in order to get closer super, you know, certification. It's actually not all that complicated. If you ha had to bring like meat or cheese or other dairy products, then you're in trouble. But um, spirits are actually not too bad. Because basically, uh, so the nice thing is, if it grows out of the ground, uh, if it is fruit or a grain or uh, grass or asparagus, it's pretty much automatically kosher. But there are a couple of exceptions. Um, well, really two of them. So let's talk about those two big exceptions. The first one is is Passover. Passover... Uh, uh, Observant Jews are not allowed to eat um, fermentable um, leavening grains. So uh, <clears throat> that means no whiskey. Uh, this, four roses, single barrel. Most of the year, most of the year, this would be a perfect, perfect example of a kosher spirit. Um, as good as you could think of. But on Passover, no, because uh, there is, well, particularly uh, rye and barley in this. Uh, corn and some other things like rice are more on the bubble, but it's enough that you shy away from just grains in general. Just just don't do it on Passover. Um, so stuff like this, for Passover purposes, is out. Uh, and you might think, okay, well, that's, that's fine. I can still bring something deliciously, you know, woody and bourbon-like. How about, how about this? Uh, Foursquare, 2008, uh, rum from Barbados. This is cane-based and not grain-based, so it should be fine, right? Well, the problem is this is aged in ex-bourbon casks, which means grains have been involved somewhere, meaning you should probably shy away from this too. And uh, uh, so, so that's um, that's Passover. Like, like grains are just kind of generally out. Um, uh, but the nice thing is, for the rest of the year, um, stuff like this, four roses. This is great. This is fine. Um, okay, moving on to the second exception, which is basically stuff that uh, idolaters would be using in their dark ceremonies. And above all, that's going to be wine. Stuff uh, that is, um, has the potential for being made into wine, has the potential for being um, turned into, used for idol worship, that is all out. So uh, the first thing that is going to be out, uh, this beautiful cognac right here. I mean, underneath the, the distillation is basically wine. So this, this is not allowed. <coughs> Um, I mean, the nice, nice thing about the, the stuff like like um, uh, brandy is that it's uh, it's autom automatically uh, mevushal, which is a fancy way of saying if this was if the if the base materials in this were originally certified kosher, you could serve it with no problem, even being you know non-Jewish. Um, but because the the original materials aren't, you're still in trouble. Um, so the the deal with Wine and based, well, grape based stuff in particular, is um, the production process and the original materials have to be have to go through certification, because 
idol worshippers might me like me might have been misusing it. So that's the big thing there. Um, now uh, th there are cases like you might think stuff like this would be fine. Um, Slivovitz, plum brandy. Uh, is this okay? Because it's not. It's still fruit, but is it's not grape based, right? There's debates about this, but basically this is, it's enough of a bubble case that I would say shy away from stuff like this unless it has kosher certification on the back. Like, um, well, like this. This is okay. This is the uh, Empyrean Quince Brandy I reviewed a while back. And this indeed has, I don't know if you can see that, the label's not all that clear. This has a kosher certification on the back, meaning uh, it's been overseen by observant Jews and uh, uh, signed off on by the relevant authorities for the entire process, and plus uh, you, you can serve it um, without too much of a problem. So if it's got a kosher, if it's a, if it's a fruit-based spirit that has kosher certification, you're good. That's also fine. Otherwise, um, stuff like cognac and all other fruit-based brandies, uh, shy away. All right, I'm gonna put that back over there. And just like with the um, uh, the whiskey thing in in uh, in Passover, this passes along to casks. So um, look at take the take a look at this tamdu here. It's it's a whiskey, like it's a it's a barley waste based whiskey. So it should be fine um, outside of Passover, except it's been aged in sherry cask, Oloroso cask. So Oloroso sherry is a wine. This is no good. Stuff aged in port casks, stuff aged in Madeira, obviously all kinds of dry wines um, are not okay. So um, they cannot, they, they uh, are not allowed, sadly enough. Um, and also you should be shying away from stuff where the cask is not identified, where they could be, you know, um, uh, you know, making sort of Frankenstein casks and retoasting them and all that stuff. Wine could have still been involved there. Unless they're explicitly stating, like, ex-bourbon or whatever, don't do it. <coughs> and that's it. That's basically those two exceptions. Um, Grain-based stuff on, on Passover and avoiding, you know, uh, fruits, uh, wine-involved kinds of things. <coughs> okay, so you may be saying to yourself... All right, just, just tell me what, this is all very complicated. What are the safe things? What are the things where I'm always going to be safe uh, bringing it, you know, to a kosher dinner or something? Well, uh, first answer, let's go back to this Imperium. Um, kosher certified brandies are always going to be good, right? I mean, there may be some cases where they were aged in uh, an ex whiskey cast or something, but that's pretty rare. Um, everyone, everyone loves these things, or at least they should. Uh, these are good to go. Uh, other stuff, uh, uh, unaged rum and unaged agave spirits. So this Claren Le Rocher, great choice, great choice for a kosher dinner. Um, this has been made entirely from cane. Um, no fruits involved, no grains involved. Um, it has never seen oak and has never which might have been tainted by one of those things which are in some circumstances not allowed. So this is a great choice. This is a very safe choice. Uh, other stuff. Um, uh, yeah, unaged agave. How about this uh, this uh, clay distilled Vago uh, Mezcal? This uh, uh, Mezcal Ancestral. Again, safe choice. Been entirely from agave, no fruit, no grain, no barrel, getting, you know, complicating things. Uh, along those same lines, so tall. So tall is completely okay. Great choice. <coughs> and if you are aging, uh, 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 craving some oak, and I mean, the obvious choice would just be going, you know, like bourbon or rye or something. Something that's been in, in you know, virgin oak that no wine has touched. Um, but if you didn't want to do that, and you wanted to stay completely safe, even for Passover purposes, easy. Get yourself uh, maybe a privateer or something. Um, a lot of their stuff is aged in uh, completely new American oak, virgin oak. Uh, this particular one is aged in a one of their own used rum casks. So 
also completely fine. X, X rum, uh, X tequila, everything else totally okay as long as it's as uh, uh, fruit or you know for Passover purposes grains have not been involved. Uh, and that's it. That's uh, that's the Passover spirits video. Hope this was helpful and informative. Um, here are your safe choices. Thanks for watching and cheers.